Hi everybody, Molly Brown here, 4-H Youth Educator with Cornell Cooperative Extension. Welcome back to a long-awaited cooperative gardening. It's taken me a while to be able to do this video. I was in mourning, I had a lot of anger, a lot of um, trials and tribulations with the gardening. So, on this episode of Cooperative Gardening, we're going to talk what we learned about gardening. <laughs> oh man, I learned a lot with this gardening. Let's start with some of the first lessons that we learned. First lesson, gardening ain't for the faint hearted. That's right. Uh, number two, gardening is not easy. No, it's not. <laughs> All right, number three. You may think that you're having the most beautiful crop you've ever seen in your entire life, and three days later, it could all be gone from disease and pests. Yep, we'll get to that, okay? Um, number four, you can, um, well, there's just a lot, a big learning curve to gardening. Let's just start with that. So should we check out what we've learned and what's going on in the garden? I'm hoping that I'm not the only one that's a first time gardener, you know, that's gone to a garden this extravagant and big, um, that's had a little issues along the way. So let's, let's check it out. Let's do it. All right, here we go. All right, welcome to Inside the Garden. The only thing that comes to my mind when I'm inside here, welcome to the jungle. That's right. This is my homegrown jungle. Welcome. Let's take a tour. Okay. All right. Well, let's start in one corner. The good news is Brussels sprouts, however pa um, planted too close together, are looking beautiful. Woohoo! We've got one plus there. Zucchini. All right. Well, so early on, we had an issue, still do have an issue, with voles. That's right, people, not moles, voles with a V. V O L E S. And you know what the, they are? plant killers. So underneath all of these boards that I had here are very huge, intricate tunnels of vole destruction. Um, tried vole, tried we, uh, traps, we've tried it all. But uh, they really took their toll on the zucchini. However, this plant here, killing it. It's a good one. All right, on to our next pest. Let's talk about the squash bugs, right? This was a really beautiful cucumber plant gone horrible. That's right. I had Jim over, check out. Ended up I had a squash bug infestation. No matter what I did, could not, could not take care of it. And they took care of the cucumbers. So I left them there for you guys to see the destruction of the squash bug. All right, let's continue on. This right here, that's right, that's tomatoes. Indeterminate tomatoes gone crazy. That's right, that's what um, not pruning them and not taking care of them and them going rampant has done. So um, that's the entire jungle of tomatoes. Uh, I'm so overwhelmed with the tomato situation. I actually can't get past there, but I am very sad to show you. If you remember several months ago, that area right there that looks like, and it has a little board that says maters. That's right. That was the biggest beautiful crop of potatoes you've ever seen in your entire life looking beautiful, looking awesome, all dead within three days. That's correct. That is correct. On the plus side though, spaghetti squash has literally taken over the entire garden. One there, one there. They're actually hanging out with Jim's tomatoes here. Let's go take a look on the other side here. All right, come on out. All right, 
So we've got more spaghetti squash growing outside of the garden. It's even pulled my fence down. But we've got pest number, who knows at this point, 17, 18, 19. We've had them all in this garden. Every pest you can imagine, we've had them. So this right here, folks, powdery mildew attacking my squash. Don't worry, I got something to take care of it. So we're gonna try that out. All right, so we continue this way. This is really fun. Check this out. Got tomatoes. This is, uh, keep in mind, we are still on the outside of the fence. We've got tomatoes. We've got more summer squash growing. And then lo and behold, there it is. Tree summer squash. That's right. Climbing up the entire tree outside of the garden, summer squash. Spaghetti squash, I'm sorry. Spaghetti squash. Fortunately, it's my favorite thing ever, so I'm not mad about it. But let me take you back over this way and we can talk about the situation with the potatoes. It took me a while to actually get over the carnage that happened with the potatoes. I had already planned out potato recipes, potato salad, everything, everything under the sun. That's all that's left, folks nothing some tomatoes right there stragglers nothing left all of it gone So what have I learned? What have we learned? And I'd love to hear your guys' um, experiences with your gardens. And did you have some learning curves? Because I had a lot. It's hard for me to get on camera and um, admit defeat. There isn't all defeat. There's some defeat, some, but there's a lot of good too. Um, I think in hindsight, my garden is too shaded. Um, when I planted the garden, that tree didn't have leaves on it yet. Um, master gardeners, who are still, by the way, available to um, talk and help you with your gardens, um, suggest over six hours worth of sun for your garden. I don't think I'm getting quite that or I'm getting right under six hours. So that's something to think about in terms of positioning. The other thing that I've discovered painfully is that um, you're gonna have um, more issues, more pests, and I had every pest under the sun. You believe me. Um, with a newer soil, a soil that hasn't been worked, that hasn't been um, properly treated, that hasn't been um, taken care of or tested, Along the line, soil is actually made up of a lot of elements, phosphorus, nitrogen, magnesium, um, potassium, all of the, all of it. And so I would suggest for anyone that's really wanting to take gardening seriously to have their soil tested. Cornell University does it. You just sent in a little um, soil sample and they'll send you back a, a, a report on things that you're missing, things you could add that would help um, combat pests. Because what I have learned, that my taking away learning lesson from this whole experience is healthy soil creates healthy plants and less pests. Um, I can't even start, like, I'm, I feel like I'm missing so many pests. Um, the Japanese beetle almost devastated every fruit tree and plant that I have. Um, I also went and bought thousands of Japanese beetle traps and found out they're actually worse. They attract more Japanese beetles. So I had this huge devastation of Japanese beetles because I went crazy with those traps. Um, I actually, my potatoes on the other side, 
um, have blight, early blight, um, which has wiped those out. My tomatoes on the uh, deck have septoria spot disease. I mean, I'm like a dictionary of diseases over here. Diseases and pests. It's it's amazing. It's amazing. Um, however, I'm not going to give up. No, I'm not. I am going to learn these lessons. I'm going to take them with a grain of salt, minus the potatoes. I still cry a little bit about those. <laughs> so sad. Um, and I'm going to learn. And next year, I'm going to do the soil sampling. I'm going to do the soil testing. I'm going to make sure that everything is right. I'm not going to plant as much. I'm going to do more upkeep. I'm going to learn and grow and wait till you see my bounty is going to be phenomenal next year. However, one thing I do want to mention. So I had a major disease issue with the potatoes, right? Next year, what I'm not planting in that area is any veggies that are in the nightshade family. No potatoes, no tomatoes, no eggplants, nothing along those lines, because that area has already been compromised by this particular disease and pest. So something different is gonna have to grow there next year. So think about that with your crop rotations next year when you're doing your gardens. Don't torch the garden. Don't take up bowling instead. I thought about it, I did. I said, you know, I'm done. And there's one days that I didn't even wanna walk by the garden. But in hindsight, look at these beautiful spaghetti squash. My favorite thing of all time. So something did work out. Lesson to be learned. I hope it helped you. Love to hear your stories. Um, Molly Brown, Cornell Cooperative Extension with Cooperative Gardening.